Hey guys, what is up? Sam or Scorpio here, bringing you guys a video I'm so excited to be making. Today I'm giving you guys my ultimate guide on how to get set up and ready to play Leviathan Remastered. I'm going to be going over everything inside this map for you guys, all the basics that you want to know for your first game of Leviathan. I'm going to give a big shout out first to Jaybird and the entire team who have worked so hard on this map and an even bigger shout out for giving me early access to this map to have a chance to play and make this video for you guys. So all the links to the map and to their socials will be down in the description. I'd highly recommend you check it out because this map is insane. We're going to be going over so much stuff in this video. We've got power, pack-a-punch, shield, a new specialist weapon, the special rounds, several other easter eggs, perks and so much more. It's going to be an exciting one so make sure strap in and get ready to go. This video will actually have the timestamps in the description below so if you're looking for a particular segment then go down to the description and you can actually skip to that part of the video so you can find out exactly what you need to know. So a lot of this map's mechanics actually come from Moon. And with that, one of the big ones is that you're going to need a special suit to breathe within a lot of the map. You can find this suit actually as you enter the spawn room from where you initially drop in. Pick one up, put one on, trust me, it's going to be important. You're going to want to avoid breaching tunnels within this map, which is done by throwing explosives and splash damage weapons around the map. If you do break any glass, that area will begin to flood with water and that just brings with it a whole string of issues. So trust me, avoid those kinds of weapons. So also coming in from that map are hackers and excavators and what that means is these are a cool device that actually will override that breathing equipment but it will bring with it a whole set of benefits so you can pick one up when you want it and you can do a whole lot of cool stuff. You can hack players to give them points, hack perks to get the money back from them, you can hack doors, you can do all sorts with it, it's a ton of fun mechanics. But one of the big things that involve with it is the excavators. Now what these are is you will hear a voice every so often that let you know that an area is about to be breached. What this means is that area is about to be flooded and destroyed and you're not going to be able to run through there and if too many areas actually get breached at once then you will find whole areas of the map do become locked off. So when you get this heads up that this is about to happen you're going to want to prevent it as soon as possible. You simply do this by going and grabbing a hacker which can be found in many spawns across the laboratory, way too many for me to list so just run about, you will definitely find one there all over the place. And once you've got that, you're going to need to run back to spawn. But since you won't have your underwater breathing equipment, you're going to need to avoid water as much as is possible. You run through it occasionally, but just try to keep it to a minimal or, well, you'll risk suffocating. Once you actually get back to spawn, you'll need to find one of these three excavator control panels will actually tell you when you hold the hacker out, you can interact with it. Just hold the button down, interact with it, it will stop the excavator and everything will be okay. If you wait too late, then that area will be breached, it will be flooded with water and well, that simply cannot be undone in this map. So turning on power inside of Leviathan Remastered is as simple as flicking a switch. Literally, as with most Treyarch maps. All you're going to need to do is save up enough points to go to the power switch. I'd recommend just staying in the spawn room to do this. You're going to need exactly 5,750 points to get to the switch. I'd highly recommend following the path I'm showing you guys on screen. It's by far the quickest and it will save you a hell of a lot of effort. And once you're there, power is on. And now we're going to move on to how to actually open Pack-a-Punch in this map because believe it or not, it's actually just as simple. So once you've actually got the power on, believe it or not, Pack-a-Punch is open and ready to be used. But how do you get there? Well this is where it gets really cool. Pack-a-Punch in this map is actually inside a submarine. So you're going to be listening out for sonar submarine type sounds and when you actually hear them you'll know the submarine is on its way. You won't really need to worry about waiting for the submarine as it basically constantly does circuits around the map so if you miss it it will come back to you very very soon. I'd recommend the place I'm standing here as the best place to catch into the submarine. You do need to be inside an outdoor area and you're going to need to be near a staircase where you can get relatively high ground and when you see it fly above you just simply jump up up and you will enter the submarine. It's really that easy. You're obviously only going to be able to do this at the really high outdoor areas which is why as I say this is by far the best place to do it. 
When you're inside, you'll see the Pack-a-Punch machine. There's some cool pods around you to actually eject. If you want to get out, you will be on a time limit when you're in there. There's also a number pad in there that we don't really know what that does yet, but I'm sure we'll find that out soon enough. And also worth noting on this map is Double Pack is disabled. That's right, no overpowered Blast Furnace or Dead Wire. None of that. Plain old classic Pack-a-Punch just the way it should be. Now let's talk buildables. There's a ton of them on this map, some really awesome ones, and we're gonna start off with this map's unique take on the shield. To obtain the submersible armament shield inside of Leviathan Remastered, you'll need to collect and build three parts. Each of these parts have three locations that we're going to go over for you guys now. The first part is always found within the biodome area of the map and the first location for it is right in the centre next to this little fence here in the corner. Our second location is against this little pipe here on this little bit of metal next to the Pantheon entrance and our third one is actually down in the Pantheon, this little temple area and it's actually just up against this little smoky rock. Our second part can be found just by Speed Cola, which is actually just outside the laboratory next to this little generator. Our first location is on these two barrels here. Our second location is again in a similar area, right leaning up against this little crate here just beside the door. And the third and final location is up this little staircase here by the generator itself, again rested on these barrels. Our final part can actually be found just by going up to the power switch and then just dropping down to this little area where you'll find the reserve soda perk. First location for this part is up against this shelf here. The second one is again just along this corridor leaning against a wee shelf here tucked away and hidden. And our third and final one is actually a little bit further up into the tunnel. You can find it leaning against a pipe here. Now, to build the shield, you have a choice of two build tables. The first one is on the left-hand side of spawn. You will find there is a build table tucked away in this little corner here, and you will be able to build it there. Or you could choose to build it just outside the biodome. If you just head out this entrance here next to the Pantheon staircase, then you can actually just go upstairs here and you can build it on this build table. Once you get the shield, you will find it is insanely OP. It has this right trigger ability that will actually take out entire hordes. I've used it to kill hordes of zombies well into round 20s. It's absolutely insanely powerful. And it also has an awesome melee attack. Also a note for this map that is really cool, is much like Black Ops 4, you can actually repair your shield with a carpenter power up. Neat little feature there. Now next up, this map actually features an incredibly overpowered specialist weapon named Poseidon's Wrath. It's basically an overpowered water staff. Now you actually get this simply by finding three parts and building them together. The first part is always located in the cafeteria, and the first location for this is on this little table here, right next to the Juggernaut machine. The second one, still in the cafeteria, is back in the actual kitchen section, next to these sandbags here, on this cool little crate. And our third and final location for this part is actually again on a different table next to this little stand sitting on this chair. The second part can actually be found in the observatory area of the map. The first location for it is in one of these little side corner rooms. Against this bloody table here you can find the first part. The second location is actually against this little medical table, again in one of those corner rooms. And the third and final location is on this little crate here, right in the middle of the room. The third and final part can actually be found just down around the rough area of the power switch. If you follow the tunnel along from power, you'll actually find the first location just against this wee pipe here sitting in the tunnel. And then if you keep following there through that wee doorway, you'll actually find your next location leaned up against this wall. And the third and final location for this part is actually inside the first underwater area that you will encounter against this little metal pylon here buried in the grass. Once again, you have the same choice of the same two buildable tables here, one just outside the biodome up the staircase and the other just on the left hand side door from the spawn room. And hey presto, when you build it, you will have an incredibly overpowered specialist weapon. This weapon's a ton of fun to use, you just activate it by pulling the two triggers at the same time. And well, it fires out these insane water blasts that will just take out whole hordes. It gives off a cool effect when you actually activate it to kill some of the zombies around you. And it also has an incredibly OP melee ability where you can melee with it and it will one hit well into round 20. Bit like the staffs kind of, it's basically a water staff and all round is just a ton of fun to use. I know you guys are going to love this one. So returning from the World at War version of this map 
is their iconic unique take on the Nova Crawlers. These rounds will come about every five to seven rounds. You usually get your first one somewhere around that mark. And when you do, the first one can be really tough. Once you're set up in the later rounds, they're super easy once you've got a good pack punch gun and you're properly set up, you're not gonna have a problem taking these guys out. But when you're starting off with your starting pistol, you're not gonna have a fun time trying to survive this. I'd personally recommend buying the MP5K off the wall, it's by far the best gun I've found to be able to take these guys out nice and easy, but these rounds actually do have a fun little quirk to them, being that if you can actually complete the round without missing a single bullet, you will be rewarded with a free perk. There are a couple ways to do this. Firstly, just be laser accurate. Somehow I managed to do this, I don't know how, because these guys are so fast. That's probably not the best way to do it. My personal favourite way is actually just to melee. You can either melee with a shield if you've got that, or you can actually buy the bowie knife off the wall. The bowie knife is actually found in the pack room on the wall, but as you can see, it's very high up. You can't reach it. Well, this map has a unique way to handle that. All you have to do is throw a grenade through the window, and this room will actually flood with water, and once it does, you'll be able to jump up and buy the bowie knife. This is probably the easiest way to take out that first wave, because you can just melee them all, very nice and easy. One thing we actually noticed in our beta build of this map is at the end of Nova Crawler rounds, they will in fact drop a free key. Now we don't know what this key does as of now. You only get it once on the first time you complete one of these rounds. And in our beta build, it didn't seem to do anything, but in our build, Easter eggs were locked as I mentioned earlier. So we didn't have access to any of that stuff, but I'm sure in the full version, this is gonna play a big role in kicking off that Easter egg. So now we're going to go into some of the awesome and unique mechanics that exist in this map and just generally going over what makes this map stand out from the crowd. And we're going to start off with this cool little unlimited free power up, almost an easter egg I guess you'd call it. So if you go into an underwater area and you look about above you, you'll see there's sharks swimming about. If you actually shoot and kill them, you'll see you get hit markers as you shoot them. When they die, they will shoot down a random power up towards you. Could be anything, max ammo, fire sale, double points, whatever really happens. All I know is that you can actually get as many of these as you want because after you've killed one shark, in a little bit of time, another one will respawn and you can just kill it, get another one and the cycle will continue. So it's a really cool way to just get free power ups if you're in need of it in a clutch situation. So this map actually has a really fun and unique challenge system, sort of inspired by the kind of thing we see in Gorge Krovi and Revelations. These are really fun and if you actually go down to the spawn room, you will see that behind where you spawn, each player has their own TV with three challenges on it. These can range from anything from staying in a particular area for a certain number of rounds, kills with a particular weapon, leaper kills with melee weapons I've seen. There's all sorts really in the mix and your first challenge will reward you with a max ammo. The second one will be a random free pack a punch gun. I've seen really anything from this one, from a pistol to a wave gun. There's all sorts in there. And by the way, the wave gun can actually also be found in the box. So that's a cool little note to add on there. And there is also a free perk for the third challenge. So really OP rewards here that make these challenges really worth doing. If you've got any confusion on any of your challenges, then be sure to let me know in the comments below and hopefully I can clarify that for you guys. In terms of that free perk, this map actually has 10 perks on the map that you could get from this that are just generally as well available as machines sorted across the map, including two brand new perks created for this map. We have Quick Revive, Juggernaut, Double Tap, Speed Cola, Mule Kick, Stamina Up, PhD Flopper, Deadshot Daiquiri, and our two new perks, Vigor Rush and Reserve Soda. So obviously, with our classic Treyarch perks, you're used to them. You know what they do by now. But in terms of our awesome, brand new custom perks on this map, let's start off with Vigor Rush. Well, this perk is super, super powerful. What it does is it makes you fire explosive rounds, giving your shots an extra boom against the undead. And believe me, it really does that. And then our second perk, Reserve Soda, I mean, it's kind of in the name, it's a bit obvious. It's a bit like Bandolier Bandit from Black Ops 4, but even better. It will increase both your magazine and reserve ammo capacity, so you carry even more ammo. It's a really awesome perk, it's a simple one, but it's really going to help you out if you're going for a longer game. 
And with that guys, that basically goes over everything that you need to know to get started and set up inside of Leviathan Remastered. There's so much more stuff that we know is in this map that we haven't got to explore and experience yet. We've got a mysterious keypad that we really don't know what it does. A one inch punch weapon returning from Origins. The harpoon gun, an awesome new wonder weapon. An unused build table still in the map that we never found a use for. And a massive diver boss in the trailer that wasn't in our build, so who knows, maybe this is an easter egg boss, maybe it's a panzer type boss that's going to be an awesome surprise on release. We really don't know, but I can't wait to jump into it all with you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, if you have, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below, are you checking this map out? If so, what's your favourite part of it so far? And yeah, like, comment and subscribe, I'll see you on future Call of Duty videos. Bye!